Welcome back everybody. Hopefully you guys had an awesome day. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I appreciate the support on the channel from everybody that's subscribing and just flowing through and watching the content and checking out the snakes. So we're going to be feeding the four biggest boas. Um, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to feed um, Pop-Tart on camera because she, for the last day, has been behind this water tub just hanging out and that water tub is a pain to move and if I fed her I would not be able to get the camera angled on her uh, the right way to be able to see her so unless she comes out uh, while I'm feeding them then I'll just have to feed her off camera which kind of sucks but I want to show you guys peaches we can kind of see her along the edge here and so this is where her tail is. We go way up here. And about right here is where her head is. And she's over a year. Um, probably a year and four months, a year and five months. And I would say, so this is an eight foot enclosure. And so this would be the four foot mark right here. So she's, she's is four feet or almost four feet, which I think is a really good size for them. Um, I know that I have have seen some year old Burmese that are eight feet, 10 feet, but I'm trying to um, feed her not crazy. So we have some rats and they're super bloody. So got some comments in the past saying that, um, you know, these were alive and then I, uh, I killed them myself, which uh, did not happen. These come frozen right from the, uh, the rat guy and you know, most of the time I'm, I'm there when he gasses them. So the instant, as soon as they gas them, uh, it kills them. They go right into the freezer and then thawing them out. Some of the blood will unclot and then um, they'll bleed. So being in a baggie, um, if one or two bleed or just if one bleeds, then they all get messy. So hopefully YouTube doesn't take this down because of the blood. Um, you know, it's not purpose. Uh, it's not doing anything you know I'm not trying to make this on purpose to make them bleed because I don't want them to bleed I don't want them to bleed on the floor I don't want them to bleed all over the snakes because I do have an albino and then the ghost is super uh, light uh, say skinned or scaled and then it'll, it'll stain them like it'll go on them and then I'd have to give them a bath and all this other stuff so it's kind of a pain once the blood gets on there but um, so who do we want to feed first? We'll probably feed the common. So we'll probably just go common, Argentine, um, albino, and then and then we'll save the ghost for the last. So some of these are pretty big mediums. Um, like that looks like a large, which I'll give to the common. But some of these are quite big. So hopefully my ghost can, uh, can eat that fairly well. Should be, I mean, it'll definitely will leave a bulge. So I just won't mess around with her. Uh, move her, touch her, uh, she's got water, so I won't have to get into the cage for at least three or four days, which is, oh look at that, caught, that's a big yawn, nice, rarely do I get to see that, so very glad I caught that on camera for you guys, and for myself, I'm going to go back here and, and screenshot that. Uh, for a picture, even though it is messed up because of the uh, the plexiglass and the and the lights kind of messed it up. But I know you guys are, I know a lot of you guys love seeing the uh, the boas eat, uh, especially the bigger ones. I love seeing the bigger ones eat, just because they're powerful. They hit hard. Uh, they're fast, and uh, we do have to be careful though because we don't want any incidences. Or I don't want any incidences because I'm the only one here. I mean. From a feeding strike, they could definitely mess you up. They wouldn't kill you, but they would definitely, uh, 
definitely hurts you and it'll take a while to get off to get them off of you so she's already in a position right now coiling position where she's just ready to strike so it's kind of a dangerous move for her right now because of the plexiglass um, even though if she hits the window it'll, it'll get knocked down but she could break her jaw she could break her neck now I'm looking for my snake hook so I want to be careful and pull the glass down with my snake hook ah there it is so no matter how nice some of these snakes are um, once food is around they don't care who you are they will mess you up All right, guys, so we can hear that the Argentina is not happy that uh, I am still in the room and feeding off the other snakes. She uh, gets very, very agitated when uh, when she eats, and so she just blows a lot of hot air and definitely lets you know that she is not wanting anybody's presence in the area. So we'll just watch some of these snakes eat, and then we'll just wrap it up. So all of them are... All of them took them very, very well. Super hard hitters. Um, you know, I would never want to get bitten by a feeding response on any one of these snakes, especially when they get, you know, full grown adults. And um, definitely, definitely not on the, uh, on the Burmese or the Anacondas because they, man, I don't even know. I don't know, I don't know what you would do other than, you know, once these get up to be bigger, uh, my other snakes need to get bigger. I'll definitely have a bottle of um, alcoholic uh, mouthwash or just a bottle of cheap vodka because I've heard that if you pour vodka on, on their mouth, um, they release because it burns them. But I mean, it's either, it's very, very rare that a big snake um, injures somebody or kills somebody, extremely rare. But it does happen, like you're more likely to get mold or a bit or whatever by your dog um that's a that's a different topic though but um you know with me just being in the room i do have to take my precautions in the uh not just the room but you know in the house i live alone so when i knew move a lot of these snakes and feed them you know i do have to be super cautious and careful about it and i think she 
is knowing that there's food in here. I was really hoping that Pop-Tart, we can barely see her in the back. I thought she would have come uh, forward just a little bit from the commotion uh, or the smell, but apparently that's not happening. So, all right, I will stop talking and we'll just watch some of these snakes eat. Alright guys, so that was the end of that video. Sorry that the glass on this stuff is super dirty and I didn't want to bring them back down, disrupt them from eating, um, have regurgitations or anything like that. So the Argentine is still super upset that I'm even in the room and I got to get that other piece of paper up there because she's, I mean you can probably hear um, but she's being super loud, super agitated, and she's eating though. She hasn't um, regurgitated the uh, the rat for defensive purposes or even being aggressive. But uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. We finally got the anaconda to come out a little bit. I kind of coaxed her out with the with the rat. Saw her strike. Saw her eat just a little bit. But they all are all are now finished. So we can't touch them for the next 48 hours. And uh, feed them again in another two uh, two weeks, maybe, uh, you know, try to stick around 14, but maybe 17 days and stuff like that. But i got to clean her cage out again. Just changed it out just a couple of days ago. So if you guys want an anaconda, uh, be prepared to change out the water daily or every other day. But on that, I hope you guys have an awesome, awesome day. And I'll see you guys on the next video.